Hi, this is Gilbert Gottfried, and this is Gilbert and Frank's Amazing Colossal Obsessions with my co-host, Frank Santo Padre, and we're once again recording at Nutmeg with our engineer, Frank Verderosa. Obsessions. And who else is here? Uh, someone who I don't know <laughs> how this show could have stayed on without. I... He is indispensable. <laughs> yes. I, I, sorry, Gilbert. I'm not sure I caught that. You were I, I, uncharacteristically quiet. I, I'm, I'm scared every day that I'm going to find out that NASA gave him a job over there <laughs> and, and, and offered him too much money. That is hilarious. <laughs> that is hilarious. Paul Rayburn. Who is, who is looking up a question that I asked him 30 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the ties that bind, you know? That's yes. what's kept us close. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna, we got an idea here for a, uh, for a colossal obsession. First of all, you wanted to say something about uh, Frank Vincent, the great character yes. actor, passed away. He's best known for popping up in I, just about every Martin Scorsese film. Well, he's in Raging Bull, uh, be, being yes. having and Pesci beats the hell out of him. Oh, smashes, yes. He's Salvi, right? Uh, yeah. Smashes his head in a cab door. And he's <laughs> Billy Bats. Billy Bats. Yeah. And yeah. Goodfellas. Yeah. And and I Frank always Vincent. I I love, you know, after busting uh, Pesci's ass, you know, you know, God. We used to call him Spitshine Johnny. Oh oh uh, <laughs> yeah, oh yeah oh uh, yeah Tommy. Yeah, 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 you you could see a face, you could see a face in your shoes. Fucking mirrors. Could, yeah, <laughs> and and then when he finally looks like he apologizes, you know, I'm just having some fun with you, and then he turns his head and before he takes a shot, he goes, "Now get your fucking shine box." Yeah. <laughs> It's a, it's a great scary scene. Yeah, and they were friends for years. Him and Pesci, they were in a band together. Yes. Yeah. He's, so, were... he, he's so Italian looking. It's like I can't stand it. Frank I, Vincent. <clears throat> yes, yeah. Frank Vincent Gattuso. Yeah, is his name. Yeah, terrific. Yeah, yeah terrific local character actor, and, New York and actor. I heard when uh, uh, Pesci beat him up in uh, Raging Bull. Yeah. He just, he enjoyed it because he had worked with him so long. <laughs> That's funny. He, the idea of beating him up That's was funny. something and, very gratifying. And he, I think he was Phil on The Sopranos. I think he was uh, he was a rival mob boss uh, on The Sopranos. That but the right. week he died, we did uh, we did the Raging Bull bit with... Um, Oh yes, with Rob yes. Paulson. <laughs> so that was also weird timing. Did you, so, it's funny. Do you want? Did you want to mention the other thing about Raging Bull we were just talking about? Oh, and Jake LaMotta. Yes. Yeah, and Jake LaMotta died. I had a beef with Frank Vincent. You did. Anytime I would try to look up my IMDb page, yeah, his would pop up as soon as you type Frank V. Oh, the, oh that's <laughs> interesting. <laughs> Hilarious. I never got to meet him, but he seemed like a real character and a very nice guy from from what I hear. Yeah. From people who worked and, with him. And he's a name that has popped up where we were talking like, hey, how about Frank Vincent? Yep. If we ever get uh, Pesci or Scorsese on this show, we'll certainly talk about him. Yeah. Somebody describes him as a not a household name, but a household face. He sure was. <laughs> Billy Betts, uh, rest in peace. So here's the idea for this oh, week. Oh, and... Harry Dean Stanton. And Harry Dean. We lost yes. Harry Dean Stanton, yeah. too. Yes. We've lost some good people of late, and they'll all be on the In Memoriam show at the end of oh, the year. Oh, that's right. So do your studying up. My favorite part of <laughs> and that, I watched the Academy Awards and the Emmys for the In Memoriam. Just to make I, sure you're not in it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I understand. I understand. Yeah. I also, well, that's the reason... When they have a magazine article about the history of Saturday Night Live, I turn to the page that's whatever became of, and I just had to make sure my <laughs> name's not on that list. <laughs> you were pretty low ranked when oh. People Magazine did. Was it People that did the oh, list of yes. Saturday Night Live or Rolling Stone? Yes, I can't I, remember who it was. It, that but, was that was a horrible. Yes, but they also pointed out that you scored in on your own in your own career oh, apart yes. from Saturday Night yeah. Live. You, you did fairly well yeah. for yourself uh, in comparison to some of those people. Eric Ryan, we did a produ we had a producer of the month suggestion, and this is on Patreon. 
uh, which we'll plug now. You can suggest uh, ideas for a show for your own pro- or become producer of the month. Just go to patreon.com slash Gilbert Gottfried, and you can become producer of the month, and you can tell us what kind of show you want to do. Also, Gilbert Sings. You favored oh, oh, us last yes. week. <laughs> it's a Valerie Sherman. You can also go there and request a song. But somebody said, Eric Ryan, who's a very big fan of this show, uh, said, what about the cinema of Gilbert Gottfried? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> See, I really wanted to save this for what's his name. Um, uh, uh, who's that? Leonard Maltin? No, or? no, no, no. Oh, God, I forget his name already. The guy with the beard and... Uh, what is your favorite? Oh, James Lipton. Yeah, James <laughs> Lipton. Yeah. Oh, when you were on Inside the Actor's Studio. Yes. Yeah. What's your favorite sound? <laughs> <laughs> the, the Bernard Pivot oh, que- yes. questionnaire. Yeah. I'll bet you anything there was never a Bernard Pivot. <laughs> Thinks he was on yeah, the mothers in law. Yeah. What, what, yeah. what is your favorite curse word? Yeah, Gilbert, as long as we're asking. But see, that's, it's funny. When he would do that, that's like. It seemed like everyone wanted to be witty yes, at that point. they all tried so hard. So instead of saying fuck or shit, <laughs> they would always go, oh, when I get angry, I always say tiddly wink. Yeah, p- <laughs> pussy feathers. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I always say... Jumping Jehoshaphat. Do we have do we have to get Lipton in here so he can return the favor and put you on inside the actor's studio? Oh, that's right. We'll get James in here. I worked with him once. He was hilarious. Uh, he said he was a pimp early in, yes, early in, in, France. in France. He claims to have been a pimp in France. That's a whole other story about James Lipton. We break news on this show, folks. He, re- he recorded a campaign right where Gilbert's sitting. He did. For Intel. And we I heard check ja- on him. James Lipton would get these French jokers to shit on the glass oh, cup. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then ask them their favorite word? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite laxative? <laughs> <laughs> Ah, cancel James Lipton. <laughs> we seem to be have, having some trouble getting this show off the I'm ground. I'm sweating. I can't, I, I can't get to the premise. Okay, so so Eric Ryan, who's producer of the month for the month of August, this is obviously running in September, we're that far behind, uh, but he said that he wants to know about, uh, well, he wants a little bit of information, and we'll try this, about every feature film you've done. Oh, okay. So some idiot with a lot of time on his hands, which was me, (laughs) went to your IMDb page, and I took a highlighter, and I found every single feature film, not your TV work. Wow. Not your video games. Wow. Not your stag reels, but just... (laughs) (laughs) um, So starting with... I'm not going to do TV movies. I'm not going to talk about the further adventures of of, uh, of Wally Brown, whatever oh. the hell that was. <laughs> but your first, fe- or the Toast of Manhattan, which we, which oh, we yes. basically abused Barry Levinson for. Uh, the, your first feature film that you are credited for is the role of paramedic. Do you know the, the film? In House of God. Look at you, how well you know your yes. own career. <laughs> now, this movie, there was a book... <laughs> That was popular. It was a a best-selling book, and it was popular among doctors, I remember. I once asked two doctors, and they loved that book, and they decided to make it into a movie. And Charles Jaffe of Rollins and Jaffe, he was producing it. Now, they had already had, uh, like, oh, uh, Tim Matheson. That's right, Tim Matheson's in it. And um, I now Jaffe would hang around the improv and other comedy clubs. So this was a sign of desperation because it was already supposed to be a comedy. Uh-huh. And I, late in the movie, they said, oh, let's throw a bunch of comedians into it. Like with the hope that if you throw uh, comedians in, yeah. that will make it funny. It was one of those. 1984. I was in it. Michael Richards was in it. Oh, Lenny Schultz. Oh, Lenny Schultz. Was and, he in a chicken costume? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what was that and, movie we we came up? Uh, every comedian was in it. 
And they all they spent a weekend at some mansion or something. What the hell was that? It, it, we came up here maybe six months. Oh, there ago. was there was joys. That's the one. Oh, joys. Well, that was a stupid joys. Bob Hope yeah, special. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. and That's now right. in our That's actual part in the movie was Joe Piscopo. Right, right. But it's it's an oh, and the director, uh, he had his previous film was a bl- about a blind ice skater. A girl blind ice skater, and so you knew he could direct comedies. <laughs> <laughs> was this Ice Castles with Robbie uh, Benson? I think so. Oh. Yes, it was Ice Castle. I don't know too many blind skater movies. I'm yeah. throwing it out there. Oh, I I've seen them all. Yeah, and yeah. and <laughs> it was like just. Bad and not bad in a fun way. Well, that's your first <laughs> feature. Yeah, and your second feature a year it later. It never was released. It was yeah. never released. House yeah. of God. Well, if we get Tim Matheson made in it here, to cable, we'll talk to Tim <laughs> about it. Uh, bad Medicine, which we talked about with Bill Macy. Yes, you did, you did the following year, 1985. You, our pal Bill Macy, Gutenberg, Steve Gutenberg, yes. and Alan Arkin. Yes, and for some odd reason, you played a Spaniard, <laughs> <laughs> Tony Sandoval. Yeah, I was Tony Sandoval, and and there were a bunch of it was it was basically like a Charlie Chan movie where okay. none of the Asians are actually Asian. Oh, great! Why they could have cast you as an Asian? You look more yeah, Asian than Spanish. Exactly. <laughs> you could play an Eskimo and get away with it. See, years ago, I could have been Mr. Moto. <laughs> <laughs> it's not too late for a revival. And, yeah, so they had a bunch of uh, non-Spaniards playing Spaniards with varying results of accents. You played, well, who was Tony yeah. Sandoval? Who was your character? I was like a, uh, you know, a mean-spirited uh, assistant to Alan Arkin. Okay. Who was the head of the universe. Did you get along with Arkin? I I didn't talk to him all that much. I talked to him a little bit. I mean, I, a great admirer. Yeah, we should of call Arkin. him. We should call him. He's one. He's one of those we haven't reached out to because we we don't think we stand a fucking chance. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but we and, but and also, we should try. What's the rush? What's the rush? <laughs> yeah. just, just had him on the View a couple of months ago. He's he's sharp. But then years later, I did. I was in a hotel lobby in some hotel I was staying at. And I ran into Arkin, and he was very friendly. Isn't that then. nice? Well, we'll try. We'll try. I mean, he would be a dream guest. Okay. Uh, then 1987, uh, this is your first movie with, that was prominent and that was seen by anybody. Oh, and, 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 and this is the most unusual thing that happened during the making of Bad Medicine, okay. which was filmed in Madrid. Right. I got laid. <laughs> I, Stop the presses you, This you know, is a whole you, other show You know you've been on location too long When people are saying Hey, how did Gilbert Gottfried Get pussy Was it, was it Gutenberg or Bill Macy? <laughs> <laughs> That's my only question <laughs> Do you want to tell Or should we uh, not tell tales uh, out of school? She was a local girl Uh huh. Really uh, cute Wow yeah. Wow this is a score. I mean, I think she had already <laughs> fucked half the movie by the time she got to Hey, guys, Dara would really like to set a mic up and be part of this. Uh, Dara would know. like to come in and join this conversation. <laughs> That's a scoop. We could do a whole other show on that. Gilbert gets flown to Madrid and gets lucky. Yeah. 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 Me getting laid mm. any place. <laughs> <laughs> they should... Preempt old TV shows, <laughs> or, or, or dim the dim the lights at the Broadway theater, and, and lower the flag at half mast. <laughs> oh, I'll let that one go. In 1987, you played Sidney Bernstein in Beverly Hills that, Cop Two. That was a big success. Yeah. Now, uh, people think I got it because of Eddie, because. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm Eddie Cantor. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then he'd row, 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 right up the river. He would row, row, row. His heart he'd give her. He would kiss her now and then. Very nice. Now, so, but Eddie even told me he had no idea that I was in the movie until right. he, he saw the sheet that yeah. day. But I auditioned for it. 
and and I got picked. And then what was so much fun is that it was <coughs> written very flat, and both Eddie and I ignored the script, and we just started playing off each other that's, and, and that's improvising. So that whole thing about, uh, oh, it's my wife's car, mm-hmm. and then I've got something. In the, that's, that was all on the spot. <laughs> And they let you do it. And, yeah, yeah. They and they kept re you know, they kept doing different takes and we did it different each time. And mm. we both Eddie and I were ad libbing back and forth and just cracking each other up. That's great. And that and great. then I remember very when, funny that, in that. when that movie came out. I I mean before the movie came out, one of the producers or something called and he goes I want to be the first to congratulate you. Isn't that nice? Yeah. And and Paul Reiser, who was in it, Paul came Reiser. up to me yeah. at the Improv in L.A. and said, your scene is the killer scene. And and sure enough, when the movie came out, they were singling out that scene. That's when you should have gotten laid. Yeah. <laughs> It was, uh, it was all uh, clicking. Yeah, I, I, I never knew how to play that. <laughs> 1987, yeah. Beverly Hills Cop can, 2. Can you, yeah. Paul, can you look up when Tony Scott killed himself and how long this podcast had been running at that point? <laughs> you think, you think there's a he connection? Ever approached yeah. to be yeah. on? I was just going to ask, did you ask Eddie? Have you asked Eddie to do the podcast? I know you don't talk to him anymore, uh, no. but that's no reason. <laughs> no, but uh, if Scoey Mitchell's still Scoey, around, we, I'm help. not sure. We, is <laughs> Scoey him. Mitchell still with us? I know we lost Stu Gillum. So there, I, before we get off that one, one quick trivia question. Go. Ready? Okay. Who plays the valet who makes a brief appearance at Chris the Playboy Rock. Mi- I didn't finish the question. Nice. Yet. Yes. <laughs> a very young Chris Rock. Yes. Yeah. And 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 you Hefner pops up in the movie. Yeah, and I guess Eddie was mentoring Chris Rock a little bit back then. Here's one uh, from this from a year later, 1988, and this has come up on the show. Yes, uh, you know where I'm going with this. Oh, is this hot to trot? It is hot to trot <laughs> from with- my heat with Beverly <laughs> Hills Cop Two. <laughs> uh, Sidney Bernstein, yeah, my crack agents <laughs> decide, hey, let's cash in and get him in a, this next hit comedy. <laughs> Let's go for the big one while we get the chance. Bobcat Goldthwait and in, Dabney Coleman. Yes, in Hot, Hot to, to trot. trot. And you were a dentist. Yes. Yeah. I I pop up at the end, and I'm there with a. I do the scene with an actual horse, which was scary. <laughs> yeah, you told that on the story with Bob on the show with Bob. Yeah, because yeah. it did whatever. I uh, like it. It at one point leapt up and on its hind legs and let out that piercing yell that they do and i thought i was dead at that point and and it was like such cruelty to animals because they thought the big joke would be the horse goes to the dentist and the horse is sitting in a dentist chair and horses don't sit Right, so especially they, not in dentist chairs. No, <laughs> so they had somehow trained this horse to painfully and uncomfortably. Oh, that's sit. terrible! That sounds and awful. And I was waiting for it to fall over and have to be shot. Oh, it's just terrible. Set. This is it was terribly pretty sad. awful. Yeah, so but this... the movie was such a hit. Where they... <laughs> Hot to trot. Where the hell was the Humane Society when you need him? Do you remember John Marcus from The Cosby Show? You know John Marcus. I think John Marcus wrote this script under a pseudonym. (laughs) I ran into him in the street, and we started talking about Hot to Trot, and he said, does Gilbert know I wrote that movie and took my name off of it? Wow. He's probably going to be angry at me now for saying this publicly. (laughs) But we'll we'll bring John in here for a mini episode and talk about it. We're going to jump all the way past you playing Knick Knack on Superboy. And, and all kinds of other cool yeah. stuff. <laughs> to the year 1990, you playing opposite Priscilla Presley, Wayne Newton. Oh, okay. The Further Adventures of Ford Fairlane. You played Johnny Crunch. Yes. <laughs> With Crunch. Andrew Dice This Clay. is where you upset Bobby Slayton because you beat him out for the part. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you remember that conversation? Oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> now, what the hell? And I never saw The Adventures of Ford Fairlane. What uh, was this? You were hot from hot to trot. So uh, hot from hot to tr- well, <laughs> well, they were mobs to see hot to trot. <laughs> right, 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 right. 
And so, you, your crack agent said, uh, "Yeah, I, 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 I went. I, I auditioned for it, and uh, Andrew Dice Clay wasn't there. But I'm sure when he saw the test, he went." I did, 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 did. <laughs> hey, what are you, pal? A homo? Ow! Hickory, dickory, duck! A guy go to the gig, 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 I was in bed with this broad. She says to me, Huggy, wugger, wugger, wugger. I did, 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 did. <laughs> I was going to ask you. Yeah. I'm glad I didn't have to ask you. I was going to say, how about a little of Dice? Yeah. <laughs> you don't need any prompting. So That uh, brought back memories. Dice was at the height back then where he was playing arenas. Mm -hmm. He was like in Madison Square Garden and Chase Stadium. He'd be. And um, he he this was going to be his big movie. Sure. And and it's funny. The movie came out and bombed completely. He's a private eye, yes? Yeah. Yeah. I've never and, seen it. And he was he was that. And I was Johnny Crunch. And I think my <laughs> name was like Johnny Teitelbaum. Who was Johnny and, Crunch? Who was the uh, character? Yes. What was the character? Well, that <clears throat> character, I think they asked Howard Stern originally. Uh, oh, you were, were you a shock jock? Oh uh, yes. Oh, I see. <laughs> so that 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 smacks of uh, uh, yes. you, you were. Uh, <laughs> what do we know about the adventures of Ford Fairlane, uh, Paul? I'm I'm trying to check this thing out here. And but, I uh, think because that movie bombed so badly, now it's picked up a, a cult following. Amazing. People love the movie, but back then it bombed so badly, and he was getting in so much trouble. Yeah. Guys. He. I heard he was originally intended. To star in my cousin Vinny. Oh, I'd heard that. Yeah, yeah. Which would have been a great. Yeah, uh, he would have been. He would have been perfect. Not yeah. that Pesci isn't wonderful. Oh, in he's that picture. terrific. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Well, as as Paul's looking oh, up. Oh, Paul will be looking. <laughs> <at> <laughs> <laughs> Until this film enters the AFI Top 100. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that same year, 1990. Now, this is one of your biggest pictures ever. Oh, oh, uh, wait, wait, wait. Um. Also in Ford Fairlane, who I'd work with again later on, is Ed O'Neill. Oh, Ed O'Neill. Yeah. yeah. In did, Married with Children. Did you put the moves on Priscilla Presley oh, on the set yeah. of Ford oh, Fairlane? Yeah. Yeah. I was supposed to be having an affair with her. In the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't work out. No. <laughs> hey, friend. <laughs> yes, sir. Is it bad that I'm still waiting for Paul to say, you know who was in Beverly Hills Cop? Eddie Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> Paul's looking up the House of God right now. He's on yeah. the first. <laughs> he's on the first. So when hey, I, when you know, I get it, I've got it. You yeah. Know? <laughs> hey, you know who was in The Kid with Charlie Chaplin? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, Jackie Coogan. <laughs> Look him up. Uh, this is your, this is your, uh, your big film. Gil, 1990. This, not Aladdin? Not yet. No. Nope. That's two years away. Yeah. You were Mr. Peabody. Oh, my God. In yes. Problem Child, right, Problem after Ford, Child. right after Ford Fairlane. Now and, you're becoming a cinema mainstay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, John John Ritter, uh, Amy Yazbek, yeah. and and our, our favorite, Jack Warden. Jack Warden. Terrific actor. And um, he was big healy yep. in that. And written by our two uh, our two former guests, Scott and Larry. That's right. Scott Alexander, Larry Karashevsky. And and yeah, I, I I auditioned for that, and they said they already wanted me anyway. And um, I remember this is a place that's been in the news lately. It was filmed in Dallas. Oh, interesting. Yeah. That's I, that's where I don't they think did. I knew that. Yeah, that's where they did the first one, and yeah, I uh, Ritter was a great guy, yeah. really friendly. And, and Warden, what was your experience of Warden? Warden, I unfortunately didn't have any scenes with. Okay, but um, I remember I said I I want to have my picture taken with Warden, and they had a picture of me pointing in one direction. And then later, they sent me a picture of Jack Warden holding that picture and pointing back at me. Oh, that's nice. And he wrote, Dear Gilbert, who says we're not close? Oh, that's nice. You still have that? Uh, yeah. That's fantastic. And, and 
I got to talk to him a little during lunch um at it, when we did for uh, when we did problem child 2 mm-hmm. in Florida and um I remember he was taking the day off because it was a Jewish holiday and he was uh, he was uh, one of the famous Irish Jews. Oh, there you go. Yeah, we were trying to list those last week. Yeah. Jack Warden, <laughs> wonderful Leo talent. Leo Gorsi. <laughs> there's a <clears throat> there's a spectacular review of this movie on IMDb. Which just, for Ford Fairlane? For no, for no of uh, problem child. problem child. And here's the, here's the headline: <laughs> There is nothing wrong with this movie. That's a, that's the most positive review. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. I mean, how often do you hear and, that, really? And G. Gottfried. <laughs> what's, what's funny about it, everybody expected that movie to be a severe bomb. And and I remember when it was my last day of shooting, John Ritter, uh, I was saying goodbye to, and he was saying to me in a very apologetic way, he was saying, well, you, you know the way it is, uh, you take jobs where you could get them, and then you hope for the best mm-hmm. for the next thing, and you really have no control. And I think he was apologizing for the bomb that Problem Child was going to be. And then for so, what the first sign that things were changing was they did a trailer, and people were in love with the trailer. Amazing. And the movie became a monster hit. It spawned a sequel. Yeah. Which is on my list. Yeah, a monster hit. And and people come up to me all the time. And, oh, and we had the problem child on our podcast. We did, in fact, Michael Oliver. Yeah. And, and Scott and Larry. Yeah. Okay. You, now I was going <clears> to <throat> ask you, we, we have this uh, beautiful arc. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have this beautiful arc of a brilliant career, one thing leading to the next. But were you were they falling that easily? Were you auditioning for all kinds of other things that ever happened? Were you, or, or... Oh, I auditioned for plenty of a lot. crap. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and I, yeah, yeah. yeah. This yeah. list could be even longer oh, yeah. and more illustrious <laughs> right. than it is. Uh, we'll jump, uh, and we're probably going to have to do several episodes of these because we've only gotten through one page. But this is fun. Uh, 1990, same year. You played Joey in Look Who's Talking Too. Oh, that's For another right. podcast guest, Amy, yes, ha- Amy Heckerling. Amy Heckerling. Yeah. Amy mm-hmm. Heckerling wanted me for that. And uh, I I got to dance with John Travolta in that. I've got to say this. <laughs> and for, I mean, it's a quarter of a second. We mm-hmm. do a simple dance. Uh, but that dance for that quarter of a second gets shown in the documentary Gilbert. That's right. That is a good plug. It's in the documentary, yeah. you dancing with John and, Travolta. Now, do we consider the documentary part of Gilbert's career, or is that a separate special? Um, no, I don't think it. Well, maybe we'll. It's maybe, tricky. We'll yeah, have maybe, to, maybe, maybe, maybe we'll, an entire episode to discuss. Maybe we'll close it. We're going to do a whole, <laughs> yeah. now that you mention it, we're going to do a whole episode with the director, Neil Berkeley. We're going to do a whole episode That's about, gonna be great. about the doc. Yeah. Uh, coming up. So I'm glad you set us up. Let's try to get through this last page. We got about two, three minutes here. Uh, Problem Child 2. Anything special to say uh, about yeah, that one that in, was, in 1991? That was done in Florida. And, um, oh, that was the one I talk about in my book, Rubber Balls and Liquor. But Another they, shameless plug. Uh, <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and so, and then one part, Mr. Uh, John Ritter and his date go to a pizza restaurant, and uh, is that Lorraine Newman? Uh, uh no, oh. no. Yeah, this, oh, she's the psychologist. Yeah, yeah. What Lorraine he? Newman's the one who's in love with John. I'm Ritter, trying to remember it right. But okay, she's evil. Right. And so he meets Amy Yasbeck as a totally different character, and they're on a date, and go no. Uh, Mr. Peabody and his date is there, this impossibly <laughs> sexy girl with big tits. <laughs> and they had written in that with there's a food fight, and at one point a meatball lands between her breasts. <laughs> and, I think I think John Ford did this first uh, yes, in My Darling yes, Clementine. Yeah. And me, being very uh, much in the creative process, suggested to the director, 
you know what would be good? <laughs> if I reach my hand between her breasts and pluck the meatball out, and they, of course, thought, oh, my God. God, this is why you hire Gottfried. <laughs> many many <laughs> directors have, have said much the same thing. That, and, uh, and and we we did the scene a few times, and I never complained because <laughs> I'm let's, a professional. Let's make sure we get it right. Was your real motivation to improve the scene? Oh, uh, yes. Or you just, just I like, care. I understand. <laughs> I, I'm like doing a scene with Brando. I, I really... At that point, you could have fished a meatball at him from between <laughs> <Yeah>. Rando's breasts. <laughs> oh, and one thing about Problem Child, the original, <clears throat> there was one scene where it's in a the uh, orf- home for orphans, the orphanage, and there's a group of nuns around, and the Problem Child is supposed to appear, and instead, it's this midget. Who appears because oh they couldn't have a child working that many hours. So this midget appears, an angry midget. Of course, right? of course, he's an angry one, and and not not a cute, attractive midget by any no. stretch. An angry midget. And, he's an angry. Elf. And I, what I remember best about it, we're all sitting around, and the assistant director. Uh, was a guy with a very impressive clip British accent. And and we're all standing by, and he goes, you know, team one will be uh, expected on set in two minutes <laughs> to see, shoot scene 12, act four. And, and the midget goes, boy... If I had that guy's accent, I could get all the pussy I want. <laughs> was he saying it sincerely he was or sincere. was he being ironic? He oh, really okay. believed. Oh, okay. He, 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 is, he believed it was the accent. That is phenomenal. <laughs> was holding the oh, I, I don't think we're going to top that. <laughs> Well, let's stop here. There's plenty more to go, and we'll start next time uh, with a movie called Highway to Hell. Ah, oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and all, all that's written here is that you played Hitler. Yes. All right. We'll we'll <laughs> we'll pick that's... it up. We'll pick it up from there next time, and uh, and we'll, we'll when we complete this, we'll do an actual Bernard Pivot survey with... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because th- this is inside the actor's studio. This is Gilbert way too, Gottfried. Way too far inside. If yeah. heaven exists. <laughs> <laughs> We got to get Lipton in here, <laughs> yes. and we'll do yeah. one. we'll do one. I won't even he, do it. We'll see if we great. can book James, and we'll do a real one. Anyway, so Eric Ryan, producer of the month. This is uh, part one of, yes. <laughs> of the, the cinema of Gilbert yes. Gottfried. Thank you, Eric. Uh, thank you, Eric. Thank you, Paul. And uh, we we have many many more to go. And uh, oh, and and I should say that I was the uh, orphanage. The adoption agency worker in the first problem child, yeah. which somehow I got a job as principal of an elementary school in the So Mr. One. Peabody had two different Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that's really messing with and, people's sense and, of continuity? And, and Kate yeah, for those who watch Problem Child <laughs> and go, it's different from the book. <laughs> <laughs> the novella. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next time. So I'm Gilbert Gottfried, and this has been Gilbert and Frank's Amazing Colossal Obsessions with my co host Frank Santo Padre and Paul. What the fuck would we do without you and your amazing research, Rayburn? I'm, I'm looking up Fort Fairlane. Please try, try not to distract me. Colossal Obsessions.